In this video, I'm going to teach you what you need to know to beat any quality questions on the GED math section to hopefully help you pass faster and with a higher score, and we're going to get started right now. So the starting point here for studying inequalities is just understanding what some basic math symbols mean. And of course, my drawings aren't the greatest, so please uh, forgive me for having such hard to read drawings here, but this is a less than sign. This is a greater than sign. This sign right here, this is less than or equal to. And as you can see, it's basically a less than sign with a little bar underneath. And this is greater than or equal to. So if you want to, you can pause the video and add these to your notes. If not, that's fine too, totally up to you. So ask yourself, if I gave you a question like this, 10x equals 20, and I said solve this equation for x, would you know how to do that? Because when it comes to solving inequalities, the same steps apply. Uh, there are some very slight differences that we'll cover in this video, and those differences are very important to understand here. But basically, your ability to solve equations is going to determine how well you do with inequality questions. So in case you don't know how to do a question like that, this, that's okay. You would have to say that you have 10x and you want to get the x by itself. So we're going to divide by 10. And the reason we would do that is because the 10s are going to cancel out. And whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other side. So I'd have to divide by 10 over here and I would end up with x equals two. So depending on where you're at with your GED studying, this might be a review for you, or this might be something that you haven't studied yet. But just note that I do have several videos on solving equations, and having a foundation with that is gonna be really important for understanding how to beat inequality questions. And if you aren't 100% confident on solving equations yet, that's fine. You're more than welcome to stick with me here throughout this video. But just know that if you have trouble solving equations, it's probably going to make it harder for you to get inequality questions right. So now if I gave you this question here, 10x is greater than 20, and I asked you to solve this, how would you do it? The same thing. You divide by 10 on both sides, and your answer is going to be the same except this time instead of an equal sign, we have a greater than sign. So here, x is going to be greater than 2. Okay, so if you haven't been listening so far, now is the time to really pay close attention. I know that it's hard sometimes when you're watching math videos and maybe you, your phone's going off or you've got noise going on in the background or I understand, I get it, but this is really the time to pay attention because on screen right now, we've got probably the most, not probably, this is definitely the most important thing to know about inequalities. And if you get this wrong, you're gonna get entire questions wrong. And no one wants that because it's gonna hurt your score on the test. So you must reverse the inequality symbol whenever you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number. So it's up to you if you want to do this, but I would highly recommend you put this in your notes if you're taking notes, because this is really the key to getting most inequality questions right here. And to let me give you a chance to try this out here. So here is an inequality, and I'll give you the chance to pause the video and try to solve this for B and keep this rule in mind. And if you get stuck doing this, Absolutely no worries because we're just going to go over the answer, but I'd like you to try to solve this for B and you can pause the video and try it now. Okay, so thank you for sticking with me so far into the video here. Uh, let's go over how you would do this. So the first thing that you would do is kind of look at this less than sign and just kind of view it the same as you would if this was an equal sign. So probably if I was going to solve this for B, I would try to add six to both sides. And the reason I would do that is because I've got Minus 5b minus 6, all right, the 6s will cancel out if I add 6 to this side. Now, I'm going to have to rewrite all this. So I'll have minus 5b is less than 10. And in this case right here, to get b, I've got negative 5 times b, so I have to divide, which is the opposite of multiplication. So if I divide by negative 5 here, I also have to divide by negative 5 on this side here. Okay, and when I divide or multiply by a negative number, I'm going to have to flip this inequality sign. So I have now b is greater than, let me try to make that symbol a little bit neater, b is greater than negative 2. So hopefully you got this answer if you did great work. If not, great work for trying. 
Hopefully it makes sense now. So here's another example question that's similar to the last one. And as long as you're trying these questions, you're gonna learn something. If you get it right, great. If not, we don't really care right now because we're, we only care about practicing and learning. And with each question, you're gonna get better. And hopefully this will help you get a better score in the math test. So I'd like you to try to solve this for N and keep this rule of thumb in mind. And so now is your chance to pause the video and give it a try. And as always, if you get stuck, don't worry about it because we're just gonna go over the answer. Okay, so the first move I would make here is I'm going to add four to both sides. Okay, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to, I'm trying to get n by itself, and I've got minus four here. Adding four is going to get rid of that. So when I rewrite, I'll have negative 12 n is greater than or equal to 24. And I'm not sure why I put plus 24 here. This really should just be plus four. I guess I jumped ahead here. But at any rate, we now have negative 12 n is greater than or equal to 24. So what we're going to do is divide by negative 12 here. And negative 12s will cancel out from the left hand side. But note here that I'm dividing by a negative number on both sides. So what I have to do here is I'm going to make sure that I take this greater than or equal to sign. And when I write my final answer, I'm going to flip it around so that it's n is less than or equal to negative two. So the correct answer here is n is less than or equal to negative two. If you got this right, great job. If you struggled with this or had trouble with this, then great work for sticking with me so far into the video. I hope that this makes sense whether or not you got this right. So this video's champion shout out goes to a test taker who tried science four times and failed four times but is still not giving up and I really admire this person's perseverance and I just want to wish this test taker well and if you're watching this video right now and you're struggling with math or another subject just know that I'm cheering for you and I'm really hoping that you can pass soon and get this behind you so you can move ahead to bigger and better things. So inequality and number line questions do come up on the GED math section so it's important to understand these and really there are two points to understand for inequality and number line questions. And if you don't remember these points here, you're probably gonna get the questions wrong. And of course we don't want that. So the first thing to note is that a closed circle means the number is included in the solution set. And also you should note that an open circle means the number isn't included. So a closed circle is just gonna be, well, this doesn't really look like a circle uh, because of my drawing, but it's gonna be closed in. And an open circle will, look like this okay and again my drawing this probably looks more like an orange than a circle but you get the point here and i have an example on the graph here and so really this is a better example of what a closed circle is going to look like and so i'd like you to think about this here is this graph is this a graph of a or is this a graph of b so i'd like you to pause the video try to think about this and whether you get it right or wrong this is going to still help you remember this for your test so now's your chance to pause the video and try this out Okay, so this graph, this graph corresponds to A. X is greater than or equal to one. And so we see that we've got this closed circle right here. And we see that the closed circle means that the number is included in the solution set. All right, so closed circle, X is greater than or equal to one. So here's another example of an inequality on a graph. And I'd like you to think about it. Is this graph right here, is this the, a graph of X is less than or equal to two? Or is it graphing the inequality X is less than two? So I'd like you to pause the video, think about it. Does this graph correspond to answer choice A or to B? So now is your chance to pause the video and think about it. Okay, so let's talk about this here. So the first thing to note is that we see a closed dot. The closed dot means that the number is included in the solution set. Okay, so in other words, a closed dot shows us that x is going to be here less than or equal to 2. Now, if this was an open dot, b would be the correct answer because for b, the number isn't included. So that would just be x is less than 2. But since we have the closed dot, it's x is less than or equal to 2. So now let's switch gears and talk about something that's a little bit harder now. It doesn't necessarily have to be that much harder. It's basically just like what we, we've been doing here. You're, the strategy is to take a compound inequality and just treat it like two separate inequalities. And so 
I'm about to show you how to do that with this example here, but first let me give you a chance to try this. So you can pause the video, try to figure this out, and you can just stick with fractions here in your final answer. You don't have to work in decimals unless you want to. So let me give you a chance to try this out, and if you get stuck, don't worry about it. I'm just going to show you how to do it. Okay, so let's talk about this question here. So basically, like I said here, you want to kind of treat this like two separate inequalities, and then we're going to combine our solutions. So first, let me just take this 6x plus 2 is less than 10, and let me just treat this as if it was its own question here to solve for x. So if I had 6x plus 2 is less than 10x, what I would do is I would first subtract uh, 6x from both sides. All right, so I'll do minus 6x over here, gets rid of 6x on this side. And so, of course, I have to subtract it from this side as well. So I would be left with 2 is less than 4x. Okay, so to get this x by itself, now I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides here. Okay, and so my answer when I do this is going to be half is less than x. Okay, so I'm just going to, let me just kind of box this answer in here so we remember this, because we're not quite done, all right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take this 12x is less than 12 plus x, and we're going to solve this for x now. And then we're going to put the two answers together. Okay, so let me do this over here where I have some room. So this time, let's say we've got 10x is less than 12 plus x. So what do you think is going to be my first move here? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract x from both sides here. Okay, and so then I go over here to this 10x, and I'm going to subtract x here. And so this is going to give me 9x is less than 12. So now to get x by itself, I'm going to divide by 9 on both sides here. Okay, and like I said, it, it's okay to work with fractions for, for this video right now. Um, so I would have x is less than 4 over 3 over here. And if you're not sure why that makes sense, it's because 12 over 9 is going to reduce to 4 over 3. Because let's say you do 12 divided by 3, that's going to give you 4. If you do 9 divided by 3, that's going to give you 3. So that's why. And I know, you know, if you are still reviewing your basic math skills, I know that I'm kind of throwing a lot at you right now. So, uh, you know, just bear with me here. I just want to kind of give you the knowledge to solve questions like this on your test when it comes to inequalities. But anyway, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these together because I've got half is less than X. I put that up here and I've got X is less than four over three. So I just put that all right up here. So this next question is the hardest question in the video, in my opinion here. And so I'll let you try the champions challenge question for the video. And you can pause the video, try it out, and then we'll go over it. So if you get stuck, don't worry. This is just to help you learn. Okay, so the strategy here that I'm going to use is to split this up into two separate inequalities here. And really, you could simplify this because every single number here, you could really divide by two. Um, but I don't want to confuse you and just overload you in this video. So let's just work with it as it is here. Uh, basically, we have 22 is less than or equal to 4x minus 2. So I want to get this x by itself. So let me start by adding 2 to both sides here. So then I'm going to have 24 is less than or equal to 4x. So my next step here is to divide by 4. And I'm going to do that to both sides. And so let me rewrite where I'm at right now. So I would have 6 is less than or equal to x because 24 divided by 4 is 6. So let me just put a box around this so that we can find this easily because we're not done yet. We're now going to kind of split this up uh, going the other way. So we'll have 4x minus 2 is less than or equal to 2x plus 12. And really, there's several ways you could do this. I am going to subtract 2x from both sides first, but that's not the only way to start this. So what I would then have is 2x minus 2 is less than or equal to 12. 
And if you were guessing that I would add this two to both sides next, then you guessed correctly, because that's what I'm gonna do here. That is gonna leave me with two X is less than or equal to 14. So the last step here is to divide by two on both sides. In doing that, when I rewrite, is gonna give me X is less than or equal to seven. So let me put a box around that. And my final step here is to just rewrite all of this. So I'm gonna have my six is less than or equal to X. And then I'm gonna take this X is less than or equal to seven. I'm just gonna put that in right here. And my final answer is X is less than or, is six is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to seven. And here we go.